Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over the five best forgotten farms. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay so today we're going to be going over the five best forgotten farms. These are farms that are typically not that like, covered that much anymore. So that being the case, let's just jump into number one, which is the Tome of Polymorph. This one is the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine and this can be found in the Jade Forest. And what you're going to be wanting to do is bring a mage because this is a mage specific farm. Now with most mage specific farms, what you're going to be wanting to do is head over there and find any of the porcupines in the local vicinity. What you'll be doing there is just by nuking them, literally, and try and run around in about a pill-shaped fashion. This is kind of like a circle, but you know, you get my point. That being said, what you'll be doing is you'll be taking out those porcupines and trying to get a hold of, this, of the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine. This gives the ability of being able to polymorph anything into a porcupine, basically, and Overall, this is a pretty good one as it goes for a stupid amount of gold. For me, when I was actually farming up this actual video, I actually managed to get a hold of one, which actually is very awesome, so I was quite happy with that, even though I was only farming for around about 10-15 minutes, and I managed to actually get a hold of one, which equaled in around about 60,000 gold for myself, and I actually managed to sell it on the following day, which was uh, quite surprising, quite frankly. But other than that, this is a very simple farm. All you have to do is go to the Jade Forest, kill the porcupines, and then hope you actually get it. Alongside that, I would highly recommend if you're on your mage, make sure that they are an enchanter, as you do tend have a tendency of getting a load of greens, so you can always disenchant those and sell those on the auction house. Now, that being said, let's get into number two, which is the Apexus Shard Farm. Now, this one is located in the Blades Edge Mountains on the far left-hand side. And what you're going to be wanting to do here is by killing anything you see. Preferably, I would always bring a skinner as this can duel as a skinning farm as well. So you can get crystal infused leather as well as not hide leather from a lot of the mobs. And what you'll be doing is running around in a circular-esque fashion, taking out all of the mobs. By the time you've done a complete loop, they will have respawned, so that is something you may want to account for. But other than that, a good amount of leather but the thing that we're actually going for is the Apexus Shards, as these can be used in the nests dotted around the area. You will be able to see them as you go around, and you'll be able to summon a rare elite. This will drop a blue item, and this can be used with more Apexus Shards to infuse into a BOE, which you can then sell on the auction house. These are the depleted items, and you can obviously sell the depleted items on the auction house if you just want to sell those, but if you turn them into their BOE blues, then you'll be able to get a bit more bang for your buck, especially if you get a hold of a lot of the weapon-esque ones. The other ones I don't tend to turn into their non-depleted form, so the BOE form, so I would sell just the depleted part on the auction house and when it comes to the weapons I always turn them into their BOE as they have a tendency to sell faster in that form. So therefore a lot of unique mobs from that and overall it's a pretty damn good farm especially if you bring a skinner along with you. Now moving on with skinning we're going to be jumping over to our next one at number three and that is the Cobra Scales farm. Now this can be located in the far left hand side of Negrand and what you're going to be wanting to do in Outland is you're going to be wanting to search for Cobras. These are dotted around the area where a load of Legion-esque mobs are, so you can always nuke those, but I don't tend to find that that yields in much value. So specifically head for the Cobras. I would definitely make up a targeting macro for them because they are a little bit hard to see. So other than that, a targeting macro would do you wonders if you find it hard to actually find them as that will just make your life a lot easier. The thing you'll be going for is the Cobra Scales which can drop from the Cobras and also you can get a hold of a load of Knot Hide Leather alongside this. Obviously Knot Hide Leather sells typically quite fast but the Cobra Scales tend to sell a little bit slower than usual but they do tend to sell. Failing that, if you have a leather worker with all of the TBC-esque stuff, 
you can always craft those into their mogs in which you can sell on the auction house as well. This tends to go for a pretty penny and overall I find that the Cobra Scales farm is very good. If you want to actually cross value it for your server you can always pull up Worth It and go into the skinning section in Worth It and it will actually give you an approximation of the gold per hour you are likely to receive. Other than that, this is a pretty dead simple farm in order to do, so let's move on to number four, which is the plans of the Arcanite Reaper. Now these are blacksmithing plans, which you can get from Banok Grimax at a 10% drop chance. Now, the thing of note for this is you're going to be wanting to go into a dungeon, and that is the Lower Black Rock Spire. This is located within Black Rock Mountain through the Searing Gorge or the Burning Steps, whichever way you wish to go. That being said, what you're going to be wanting to do is jump into the actual dungeon, click a macro of slash target Banok Grimax, and then seeing if he actually pops up on your screen as a target. It failing that, you just jump back out again and reset the instance. But aside from all of that, this is a very good farm because the plans of the Arcanite Reaper sell moderately well for recipes and also a 10% drop chance on a blacksmithing plan for vanilla is pretty damn good. And overall, the thing for this actual farm is the actual spawn rate of Banok Grimax because you're likely to get him spawn in about two times per every 10 runs. That's usually my average I go with. Sometimes I get a little bit luckier, sometimes I don't. But overall, for me, it's around about two times in about 10 runs he usually spawns. So that's something you may want to consider before actually doing this farm. But overall, I found that this is a very good farm in order to do. That being said, let's jump into our last and final farm, which is the Battered Hilt Farm from the Pit of Saron. Now, the Pit of Saron is located in the Ice Crown Citadel within Ice Crown, and always this it has to be set to heroic mode. What you're going to be wanting to do when you're in heroic mode is just by jumping into the instance, gathering up all of the trash at the beginning, burning them down, and then looting up. You have a chance of getting the battered hill from all of these mobs, and then once you've actually done that, you can then jump out and reset the instance and do that for a, for a total of 10 times. Once you've actually done all of that, if you have a chance of getting a hold of your battered hilt but alongside that you get a 10 ton of frostweed cloth and greens i tend to disenchant all of these greens as you get quite a lot of infinite dust which sells for quite a decent amount of gold if i do say so myself and alongside that with frostweed cloth if it's priced accordingly i will actually craft it into it their necessary braces through worth its flipping modules for disenchanting and then I'll sell the extra infinite dust and enchanting materials on the auction house as I do tend to find that that works out quite well in the long run especially if I'm farming such a high value item like the battered hilt because you can get really really lucky and get like two of them in like 10 runs or you can get none so that is something you may want to bear in mind especially with an RNG based farm do you really want to do that if you aren't going to get the payoff? So bringing in an enchanter and a tailor for extra scavenging works really well in order to make it worthwhile even if you don't get the battered hilt. So from all of that guys, that is pretty much everything I have to say for today on the five best forgotten farms. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be soon. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better, then why not check out the Patreon? Members get additional info, gold making resources and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.